Alright, um, it looks like the render's possibly like the wrong size and there's a few sampling issues, but the texture's kind of cool. Um, does anyone have thoughts on this? Alright, um, so my assumption that, I mean, clearly this is supposed to be a leaf. Um, in terms of the actual model mice or the model itself, I think the stem could be a bit smoother or uh, rounder. I mean, um, most most leaves don't have stems like this. Yeah. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Um, okay. What was I saying? Um, yeah, so leaf um, probably could have like a more cylindrical stem, and then usually that stem is like thick and will kind of run the whole length of the leaf. Um, and you can see that like that's been, uh, that's done a little bit with the texturing where you like position this line here, but I think that might be one of those things that could actually mm, um, benefit from being modeled directly into the leaf. Um, it also looks like the leaf itself is a little bit thick. Like I, when I first pulled it up from this angle, I, I thought it was a weirdly textured cutting board for a minute, um, and then I was like, "Oh, it's totally a leaf." But um, yeah, um, and then I think also, for, for I mean, so I can see like here's the texture. I can see that there's watermarks all over this. <laughs> um, don't get me wrong; I've totally been totally been known to use images with watermarks if I've seen like a quick thing, um, but perhaps for assignments, try to avoid watermarked images if possible. Um, and then, so like, again, so looking at the leaf, um, like the veins don't really run quite like how they would on an actual leaf. Um, so it would have been nice maybe, even to do like some kind of hand painted texture where you like painted in the veins on the leaf a little bit. Um, I'm also, you're unfortunate in the sense that I'm kind of a plant nut, so I do just spend a lot of time looking at leaves. Um, but yeah, so I mean like, You'll see, I mean, it's kind of similar to your leaf, I guess. You'll see, like, you know, here's, like, the, the center vein, and then you could have just, like, gone in and, like, kind of drawn in some of these yellow lines, like, added a bump for them. Um, so I think that might have been nice instead of sort of applying a generic uh, leaf texture to the model itself. Um, but yeah. Um, so does anyone else have any thoughts or comments on this guy? Cool. Um, I'm probably not going to break into a bunch of Maya files today unless it's something like looks weird with the model itself. Um, so we can actually probably probably get through some more assignments this week. Um, all right, so here's another random assignment. Ooh, pain. Did you fiddle with uh, anisotropy on the top of this? It looks cool. Um, yeah, so I mean, let's see. It's weird how this, the tin is floating in just this one, this one render. It's kind of funny. Um, all right, so looking at this, um, it seems like the texture of this metal is a little bit weird for the can in the sense that, like, the scratches look nice. Something about the texture itself feels a little bit too, like, beam of steel. If that makes sense, like it doesn't feel like a thin piece of aluminum or like whatever these cans are made of. It feels like very like thick and heavy. Um, and then since the sides are so, since the sides of the tin are so like busted up and scratched, I kind of would have expected maybe some more scratches on the top of this. Although I do like, I, I'm fairly certain that anisotropy was used here, and that does look pretty cool. I think, um, like how the you can see how the reflections kind of are like a little bit circular, like they're you have the highlight going in a specific direction instead of just sort of going broadly across the top. Um, so let me see what the hell. Oh, OK. Yeah, cool. <laughs> um, yeah. So this, again, I think is, um, it would have been nice to have uh, two maps. I mean, these are the only textures that I see in the uh, in the source images folder is like this guy here and this guy. Um, so I'm not entirely sure what was mapped into the Maya, but um, ideally you would have had maybe like this 
for like the color um, and then maybe go in and accentuate some of the uh, scratches with like a bump map or something like that uh, instead of just having them be a texture map. Um, because this image, especially if you turn this into a black and white image and you threw this into Maya for something like roughness or metalness, um, would probably give you a pretty neat effect because of all the sort of brushed metal detail. Um, but that doesn't quite seem like it was done. And then again, this seems like it could have maybe used some scratches on it, um, just to, to make it match with this gray texture a little bit more. Um, if anyone ever, if anyone has like questions or comments, like feel free to stop me and just yell out. Um, globe. I see the globe. Um, cool. Anyone have any thoughts and comments on this globe? Um, you guys are super chatty. I might. All right. So does anyone? I mean, okay. The first thing I notice is it would be nice if this was rendered on a background instead of just blackness. Um, Although I will say I can kind of appreciate the irony of like this is a globe in the vast expanse of space or nothingness or whatever, but it still should be on a background. Um, and then looking at the, so does anyone notice anything kind of weird about like the wood grain down here? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, you can you can really clearly see the the seams in the UVs here, um, and also yeah, the wood grain texture is kind of running in a in a bit of a weird direction. It kind of, I mean, it almost looks like it wants to be going like circularly around the model, which is not how wood grain usually works. Um, but yeah, so I mean, this is like an example of um, will be a good example of like how placement of seams is important to kind of hide them somewhere that it's not going to be really obvious, like in the front of your model, like, oh, there's a UV seam. Um, or you can go into, Photoshop isn't necessarily ideal for this on all models, um, but like in something like Mudbox or Substance Painter, you could actually go in and just like make a, make a basically wood grain stamp and just sort of paint across your seams and it will apply the texture in such a way where the seams will be even less noticeable. Um, but yeah. Um, in terms of the actual globe itself, like I've textured globes before and it's kind of a pain. Um, so I think the actual texture on the globe looks pretty good. Um, yeah. It's a little bit, all right, these two renders are like kind of a weird angle, but looks, I mean, th here's a, uh, and then like the texture is a little bit low res, like right in this area here. Um, it's like one of those things where it's like if you if you zoom in on a model like really really crazily a lot like the textures can get a little bit low res, um, and the same thing kind of goes for the uh, for the globe up here where it's like you can see a little bit of pixelation in it but like meh I don't find that to be that bad. Um, this is a cool wood texture. Um, it has like an int it has a really interesting variation of like thin grains and wide grains in it. It's pretty cool. All right. And it looks like you're missing the top half of the globe, uh, which I'm actually I'm actually curious enough to put that into Maya and see if it comes up. Um, all right, let me get set. Um, oh, so incidentally, while I'm here, um, the the reason that I asked for project uh, zip project files for this assignment. Um, was so I could have all of your textures in the right place. Um, so I could just open this, set my project, and have the textures show up if I wanted to. Um, and you can see here that um, this is, what's it called? Not a relative path. Um, this is like a, a hard-coded path of, to a file like on your computer rather than in your project file. Uh, project file. Um, which means that if I were to open this, uh, open this file up on another computer, which I have just done, um, I won't be able to access this file because it's been basically not transferred over. Um, so ideally, what you would have done is something perhaps, um, like this would all be in a, in a project folder called globe, um, and then like the, all your file textures would be in your source images folder, and you would link them directly out of that source images folder. Um, 
And then again, what that will do, like, so I, for like in-class modeling, um, I would, that would be like my project zip and then I'd have all my textures in here. Um, and I would zip all of that up and then I could set my project and it would automatically link to my source images folder um, to find all my images. But in this case, I'll just have to go back and reselect it um, and find it on somewhere. Um, does anyone have any questions about uh, zipping a project file, project folder or like what they are, how to set them up, anything like that? All right. Um, for the most part, if I say, cool, that feels right. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, in the future, if I asked for a project folder, um, if you could actually submit the, the whole project folder, that would be awesome. Um, otherwise, I'm going to have to go back in and uh, link all your textures up manually, which is kind of a pain. Um, but yeah, so when I look at this again, Antarctica is missing, and also the top one, the top frozen place is missing. What is that? Holy crap, what is that called? I keep wanting to call it the North Pole. I know that's wrong. But anyway, there should be two continents on the top and bottom of this globe that. Yeah, I don't. Dang it. This is, this is sad. I actually feel the need to like look up a globe now. Because I apparently can't remember the name of. OK, yeah, apparently. What is this? OK. Yeah, I mean, the top is still missing like this little itty bitty little piece in here. And then yeah, Antarctica is just like not there. Um, so that would have been nice to, to see perhaps a little bit more um, done to capture like all the continents. Um, but in terms of the UVs, I mean, it's pretty, pretty good on stretching until you hit like the top of the globe here. Um, so I think, I think overall this is good as long as you don't look at the poles on this. Um, but yeah, um, any other questions, comments before we wander on to another project? Um, anyone want to volunteer their own project? Cool, cool. You guys are always like super awake. All right. Um, I think this one actually, yeah, this again would be, I think, a good example of um, where it would have been nice to have multiple maps on the files. Um, so like this one, I mean, clearly, like on the wood grain color was mapped. Um, and I also actually just noticed this is using Lambert's. Um, I, I think I'm fairly confident that I've said this before, but um, in case I haven't, uh, if you guys, you guys should be rendering with um, either Arnold, Redshift, or Renderman. Um, I'll still, I'm gonna go over Redshift later, but um, at least Arnold. Um, and for all of those guys, you should really be using the, the default shaders for those specific render engines. So like for Arnold, um, you would want to use pretty much any of the, if you go into the Arnold tab, like any of these shaders are what you wanna be using. Um, don't use Lambert's or Blinds for the most part. Um, yeah, they're not horrible, but they're not physically accurate. And the the shaders built for the render engine are going to render faster and more efficiently because they're literally made for that render engine. Um, but yeah. And, aha, a file. Beat up hammer. Nice. Um, I like how this looks like a building in the city. Like, the angle of this is kind of cool. Um, all right, so anyone have any thoughts or comments on this hammer? Sorry, can you speak up a little bit? I mean, yeah, 
Yeah, I, I also kind of can't tell with the, with the inside texture. I almost want to say it's a stick of charcoal. But, like, obviously that makes no sense. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I would agree with, like, pretty much all the stuff you just said. I think, like, the bottom looks pretty neat. Um, it has, like, a really interesting beat-up sort of texture to it. Um, the only thing I might tweak is, like, the, the wood grain down here is running. It seems like it should be continue running vertically, whereas it's kind of running horizontally. But for all I know, the handle could actually look like that. I have no idea. Um, and then, yeah, I think, I think the scratches on the top are, like, maybe a little bit thick. Um, it looks like they were, it looks like they were hand-drawn metal bump. All right, yeah, so I mean, it looks like these were pretty much hand-drawn in Photoshop, um, which I 100% have no objection to. That's usually how I make scratch maps for my stuff. Um, but I think it would be, it might have been good to use, like, the thinnest, the thinnest brush possible for this. Um, because right now, it don't, like when you when you apply it on the hammer, it almost looks like confetti, like falling down. I don't. Something about this like reminds me of jelly beans and confetti. Yeah, yeah, that as well. Um, yeah, I know. I know. This is another thing. Like, I know not everyone has access to a. Um, like a digital drawing tablet, but they are really nice for adding scratches. But yeah, otherwise, like a a brush that would feather out on the edge, like you said, is would definitely also help these <coughs> kind of uh, look a little bit more natural. Um, it also feels like they might be a little bit aggressively deep um, for the texture. Um, I'm still, I'm really, really, I really like this wood texture for the bottom. Like it's just neat looking. Um, okay, yeah. It's a nice wood texture. Um, but yeah, does anyone else have any any other thoughts or comments on this guy? What am I doing wrong? Okay. Hmm. I feel like the I think the metal texture on this is also running a little bit a little bit weird. Um, like it's obvious looking at this that the UVs are like they seem to be laid out pretty well. Um, in the sense that, like, you have, like, very straight lines and there's not, like, a lot of distortion. Um, it looks like the metal texture might be running diagonally on this part of the handle, which is kind of funky. But, um, yeah, so I mean, something, something about the brushed metal look on this seems like it's going a little bit too straight back. But, yeah. I think overall it's kind of cool looking. I like that you, I, I like that you took the time to actually make um, multiple maps for the top and then like maps for the bottom and stuff as well. Um, I think actually this bottom would have looked really, really neat with like a very subtle bump map on it just to bring out some of the like roughness and scratchy beat upness in that wood. Um, and also maybe a roughness, a roughness material too. Cause I know like a lot of times wood handles are kind of like shiny. Um, if not from being polished during manufacturing, then just from like people, you know, constantly holding and using the hammer, like it'll smooth out and like, get a little bit shiny from that. Um, but yeah. Cool. And I'll ask again, but any, any other random volunteers? All right then. Um, I feel like I might actually try to work through these in some kind of semi-logical order today. Um, ooh, piggy bank. I like the texture on this. It's quite adorable. Um, but yeah, so any thoughts, comments on this guy? Yes. I'm quite a f wait. Whose whose assignment is this? I'm curious. Did you um, did you draw the nice? Um, did you draw the texture or the the pattern for this by hand? Okay. I mean, it looks cute. I like the, the scratches also feel pretty good on this, like, in terms of, like, they don't feel, like, overly huge, um, or, like, there was a really crazy bump map applied to them. It looks like the, wait, 
I was going to say, it looks like the scratches are coming off the surface instead of going in, but I can bump with scratches. Yeah. All right, yeah, so you can see, so if you look at the bump map, um, it looks like all of these scratch marks, which I like, like, again, I think they look really nice. Um, I feel like they should be recessed, or like in the image, they would be like a darker gray. Um, and then that way they would appear to be actually scratched into the surface instead of coming off of the surface. Um, it kind of, it almost works for the top though, like up here, because it kind of looks like scratched, bubbled metal kind of feel. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think overall this is a pretty nice feel to it. Um, and I like that, again, I like that you carried the, this like little swirl all the way around. Um, it's quite a nice touch. Um, ah. Wait. Okay. Interesting. Is this, wait, is this just, why are the scratches so much wider in this one? Ah, ah, yes. That would do it. Okay. Gotcha. I see. I was looking at a little before. <laughs> okay. No, that makes sense. Um, but yeah. No, I mean, I think overall this turned out pretty well. Um, if you if you wanted to do a resubmit, I think maybe just um, flip the scratches around so that they're actually scratched instead of being like raised. But um, yeah, I think the texture and stuff looks pretty nice. goes significantly faster when I don't open Maya files. Um, and again, if anyone has questions about any of these assignments or anything like that, um, like just stop me, let me know. Um, doo. All right, first thought, I can see outside of your little render box here and I can see the top is open there. Um, let's see, so anyone, anyone have any thoughts on the, uh, the texture on this? I might sort of sit here until somebody says something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's definitely a little bit of distortion, especially around the top here. Um, it's a neat, I don't know, I can't tell offhand like what maps were put into this, but like it has a really interesting like rainbowy effect to it. Um, let me see. Okay, that would be the texture file. Um, all right, cool. Um, nice. Um, this one again, so like, this one, I guess if you're drawing in scratches, um, sometimes it's nice to make them a little bit more irregular. Um, uh, or just like a little bit, like these, these feel all like really, really straight and really, really uniform. Um, which isn't necessarily bad, but like a lot of times scratches will have, um, there'll be like lots of little scratch, um, there'll be like lots of little sort of curved scratches in the surface or like really, really subtle scratches, um, just from like everyday wear and tear. I mean, this is, you can sort of kind of see in here, like a lot of times there'll be, you will have like these big sort of main scratches like running through if you can see that, it's like right here. Um, these like really, really deep guys like this, but then you do just have like a lot of other sort of um, very, very just sort of like fine wispy scratches that just kind of like catch the light ever so slightly. Um, so that's something that um, if there's a recent bit done on this, um, potentially could be, could be thrown in there. Um, it's an interesting metal texture though. Um, but yeah, there's definitely, uh, there's definitely a little bit of distortion like around the corners here. Um, and then it looks like, it looks like the top of this may have just not been UV'd, possibly. Um, there's a bunch of stretching here as well. This is another thing where like, obviously it's nice to fix the stretching, but like if this corner was just like taken from, from the front of where you're rendering from and like thrown back here, 
um, that stretch can be a lot less obvious. Um, so that would be also something to perhaps consider um, if you wanted to do a resubmit. Um, did I have textures? Okay, yeah. So there, yeah. So the UVs on this look like they were very much uh, not done. Where are the UVs? Okay, yeah. So they're the UVs are like floating off here, so they should be you know in here. Um, and also, is this planar mapped? But yeah, I mean, again, for a resubmit, I would redo the, the UVs on this because um, they're clearly not displaying your texture the way you want. Um, if you ever needed to go back in and like fix, you could fix some of the stretching in here um, just by going t and adding a few edge loops in on the sides of this. And it won't affect the curvature of the side because I already have like a bajillion loops defining um, exactly how that curve is going to be. But you'll notice like when I add, this one should be pretty apparent. Like when I add this guy in here, um, it squashes the stretching down. So it's still stretching like right in here, but it's not going halfway across the top of this cap. Um, so if you ever, if you can, and you're ever having like really bad texture stretching issues um, and you're able to add an edge loop without it like messing with the shape of your object, um, that's probably one of the simplest ways to fix that stretching. Um, and then same thing down here um, where this could be fixed um, with just another like one or two edge loops in there. Um, but yeah, so any, any questions about that? Alrighty then. Um, I might do like one or two more of these um, and then go on to teaching you guys. What? Okay. Okay. No problem. Um, this one's also, it looks like it's only like 8% of the way unzipped, so I'm, I might come back to that one. Um, I'm actually very intrigued by this strange stone pot. Um, <coughs> yeah. Anyone have any thoughts or comments on the pot here? Yeah. I think one thing, and again, I haven't taught this yet, would this be super cool looking with a displacement map? Because that would actually like change how the, the surface of this is rendered and like these little tiles would actually appear to be tacked on or like sticking out of the surface. Um, they're a little bit more <coughs> annoying to generate or implement in uh, in Arnold. But yeah, I mean, I think overall this looks pretty cool. Um, it might have been good, okay. Did a pretty good job hiding the scene here. Um, it might have been nice to perhaps add in so I, I, have t I have two thoughts on this. A, it's cool looking. I've never seen a teapot like this, but it's cool looking. Um, but it might have been nice to add in um, some kind of map for roughness. Because uh, if these are like chips of ceramic or like glass tiles in here, um, these would be really, really shiny compared to the grout that would be holding them on the pot. Um, that, and then also, so like when you go in, you can, when you go in and you like look at the bump map, the tiles are also really, really bumpy. Um, and this is like more of a kind of like silly nitpicky thing, but like sometimes if you can fiddle with the levels in Photoshop um, so that these are more of a sort of solid looking color, um, it will end up looking nicer or like smoother in your bump map. Uh, and that way the tiles wouldn't be all sort of rough. Um, worst case, if you were feeling like really over ambitious, you could go in and like color them all in white or whatever by hand in the bump map. But again, that feels excessive. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think overall this turned out pretty cool. Um, yeah. Yes. Um, we see, I, there's like a bajillion pictures on the interweb. But, um, so basically, um, 
a bump map just sort of applies a fake texture to, or like a fake, basically like fake bumps to your surface. If you scroll in really close um, to like the side of your object, you're not gonna notice a difference. Like there's not gonna be any added lumps in the side, um, no matter how deep you make your bump look. Um, a displacement map, okay, here's a good example. Um, a displacement map will actually like change the way the edge of your model looks when you render it. So like this is a bump map, it's clearly just done on like half a sphere. Um, and you can see that it still looks like just half of a sphere. Um, whereas this displacement map, it actually adds a lot more depth and sort of like makes the sides all squiggly and weird. Um, if that makes sense. Does that, does that make sense? Um, they're actually not completely awful to add in Arnold. Um, here's another example of um, just like bump versus displacement where like you can see that the, uh, the words here are a lot, they actually stick out from the surface. Um, the other benefit with displacement maps, um, you can actually, so like a lot of times um, you'll go into something like ZBrush um, and you'll sculpt the model. Like if you were sculpting scales on a lizard or something like that and you had to do like a close up of that lizard's face, um, you'd probably want a displacement map for that because if you actually zoomed in on the face, you could see the light sort of reflecting off the scales better. Um, they would look more three-dimensional uh, than a bump map would. Um, bumps are good, again, for like small details, um, but if you ever need like, you know, something to actually look like it's sticking off the surface, ideally you would use a displacement map for that, um, which I can also show you guys how to make a little bit later. Um, you can actually generate them in Crazy Bump as well. Um, it should usually kick out a displacement map for you. Um, but yeah, any, any other questions on that? All right. Um, and it would appear, come on. All right. And the other file has been extracted. Okay, oh yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, I saw your Arnold render versus the, the other one. Um, but yeah, so I mean, ignoring the fact that this, you mentioned this wasn't rendered in Arnold, I think. Um, it looks like, sweet spot. Um, it feels like some of the textures might be a little aggressive, like the sort of fingerprints here. Um, but again, that could just be because it's not rendered in Arnold. Um, so it might just be because of that. But I do, I do like that you actually took the time to go in and add um, like little bumpy fingerprints in here. Um, let's see. Ah, open. All right, so here we have a light bulb. And okay, okay, yeah, cool. So yeah, here are the the UVs for the bulb, um, and then. Oh. So, okay, this is, this explains why there's a huge zip because there's like a million PSGs in here. Um, totally fine. Cool, I like that you, I like that you actually made um, translucent maps and stuff. Um, okay, oh uh, yeah, okay, nice. Yeah, so there's like a bunch of maps for this stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, I see you take the, you did like the, the inside and the outside of the, the bulb as well. Um, I think, did I see a render of this with uh, uh, refraction turned on at some point? Okay, I feel like I saw that from a previous week, but I think I think I might have two people doing light bulbs and I, yeah, I don't know. But no, I mean, I think this looks pretty good. Um, one thing you might consider um, if you're ever, if you guys are ever rendering stuff like this, that's like glass or whatever in the future, um, I'm just gonna throw a random texture on this. Um, da, 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 da. All right, so, all right, so under this sad, tiny light bulb, um, and a sky dome because I am lazy. There we go. 
Um, all right, so I just threw a random, um, a random dome light in and a, just a default like Arnold standard surface shader, um, which actually almost looks not terrible for like the default, like one of the lighter bulbs. Um, but if you go down to, what am I doing? No. I can't change anything else. Holy crap, what am I even doing? No, it's not subsurface. What am I doing? Sorry. There we go. Had a moment. Um, all right. So if you go down to uh, under transmission, if you go to weight, um, this will turn on uh, basically refraction, or it'll make it'll make render your object as if it's solid glass um, or like a solid object. They actually have. If you go to the presets here, um, they have like a bunch of different weird uh, presets you can do. Honey is kind of interesting. Um, and you can, you know, start with the preset and then work from there. Um, for some reason, I usually just have my better luck just making my own glass. Um, and again, this just, uh, if you go to transmission uh, and you set the weight up to zero, that'll make it completely clear. Um, and then you can uh, go up here under specular, you'll have index or refraction or IOR. Um, you can twiddle with this and it will uh, basically change how the the light interacts with your object. Um, and it's going to be a little bit harder to tell just based on like what this model is. But if you ever fiddle with this on like a solid sphere of glass, like it'll be um, much more obvious. You'll notice like now it's darker than it was before. Um, and like now it's kind of clear ish. Um, the other thing that you'll notice with this particular thing, so like you look at this and you're like, oh, this is clear glass, right? Like, cool. And then the shadow is like really stupidly obnoxiously dark. Um, Arnold does have a really dumb setting that you have to do where it saves computing power um, by assuming that all objects are opaque and all of the shadows from all of the objects will be opaque unless you specifically tell it, no, this object is see-through. Um, so if you select the light bulb itself, you need to go to like the piece of geometry itself um, and you go to um, I mean, here it's called light bulb shape. If you go to the shape node here in the attribute editor, um, go down until you find the Arnold tab. Um, and there should be this checkbox that says opaque. If you check that off, it will then make the shadow more reflective of the actual material being rendered. Um, so you can see it went from being like an insanely dark blob to actually pretty much not really being much of a shadow at all, mostly just having like this little shadow of this like little filament thingy uh, casting a shadow on the ground. Um, does anyone have any questions about that? Yes. So, mm -hmm. Okay, um, my guess is that, um, so if I, let me just randomly go to this. So I have a, I have a feeling what probably happened is um, there is a setting sometimes that Maya likes you to check, um, specific, mostly for like metalness or like roughness, stuff like that. I found that it usually wants you to go in and check. Um, uh, there's a setting for like alpha is luminance. Um, and I'll show you that in a sec. So I have a feeling if I, oh, you, you did hit that? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, in that case, um, I could take a look at that specifically. Um, sometimes depending on how you have the map set up, it'll do kind of weird things with refraction. Um, I don't know. I found I found like a lot of times I prefer the way other engines calculate refraction compared to Arnold, but um, yeah. Um, but yeah, I can take a look at that if you show me your files. Was it in this week's assignment? Yeah. Okay. Um, and because I am still super terrible with names, uh, what is what is your name or your initials? Ashley. Ashley. 
Thank you. Okay. Uh, when did you submit this? Oh, wait, here we go. Sorry. I am fairly certain that I have some kind of weird dyslexia. I, I really, for some reason, have issues finding stuff from alphabetized lists. It's ridiculous. Um, but yes, I found your things. All right, let's see. Extra vendors. Oh, yeah, nice. Um, yeah, OK, so you were saying you were trying to add scratches into the, in the stone here, I assume? Okay. Um, I mean, strictly speaking, you could probably like ignore the scratches on the diamond. <laughs> strictly speaking, you could probably ignore the scratches on the diamond for the most part. I mean, you can. You you. Yeah, you a hundred percent can scratch diamonds. Um, I just find, yeah. I happen to I happen to research like a bunch of stone hardnesses a while back and like diamonds are pretty much as hard as you can get like they're brittle like you could smash a diamond with a hammer but I think scratching it would be hard um, if you had something like an emerald or an opal or like something that was a softer stone um, then you might want to add scratches in but for a diamond you could probably fudge it it's like eh. um, but yeah I can still totally I'd still be glad to look at your file and see um, What's up with that? Is this is this clear? Like this band? Okay, I was like, I'm like, this is either very metal or very clear, and I can't tell. Okay, it, it's an interesting effect. Like it might be a little bit extreme, um, but it's kind of cool looking in a strange way. It almost looks like you grabbed a leather texture and used that for the. Okay. I think this this might be another instance of like, if the bump map was a little bit less intense, it would probably look a bit more natural. Um, but yeah, let me um, break into your my files. Extra vendors. Frame. Ah yes. Yeah, the beautiful thing where it's like we're not going to display the geometry of your object. Um, one thing that you could conceivably do um, for this ring is if you, so like you'll, um, modeling facets on gemstones is like the actual most annoying thing ever. Um, just like, it sucks. Um, all right, Lambert, so you can see it. Um, but one thing, okay, I was gonna say one thing you could do um, to sort of keep it from dipping in here on the corners if you didn't want that um, oh, it was? Okay, cool. Um, I'm not sure that's like an actual cut of a gemstone, but like I'm not here to grade you on that, so whatever. Um, no, it's just like weird. I, I dip into so many hobbies that I sort of like know things about stuff, and it's just like weird, but no, you're fine. Um, if, however, that was not intentional and you did want to fix that on something in the future, um, so what Maya's doing is basically like, since this, um, since these quads here are kind of like bent in a little bit, um, it's when it's displaying this, it's basically triangulating it. It's just not showing you it's triangulating it. Um, so if you like force drew in this geometry, it would basically change the way this uh, edge bends. Um, so if you did uh, mesh tools and just did multi cut, and you drew like from here to here, you can see it's like making this bridge sort of in thin air. So if I do that, it'll change uh, the way that this bends at the edge. Um, yeah, so that's just like one of those things where it's like, sometimes you need to go in and like manually define how you want things to look and don't let the computer take over it, um, especially if you're doing like a low poly model or something for a game. Um, sometimes it's not bad to go in in certain areas of the model and like forcibly define where exactly you want this this face to bend. Um, but again, if it was intentional, then what the heck. Um, any questions about that? All right. Let's see what we have here. All right. Um, uh, okay, yeah. So I don't have your texture maps, but I 
kind of don't really care right now. Um. Alright, so I'm just gonna shove this off in the corner. And you had. You said you were trying to put, um, put stuff in roughness? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, for the bump map. Um, I find a lot of times scratches work pretty well. So, like, for something clear, sometimes the scratches look kind of cool if you just, like, leave them as a bump map. Um, I'll try that. Usually, usually it's the same issue, kind of, sometimes. Um, uh, so, I'm going to just try these. Wait, where are your where are your texture files? Uh, ah, okay, that explains why I couldn't find them. Um, it'll probably okay, cool. Uh, is this for the? This one okay, cool. We're gonna try it on the stuff. <laughs> See what happens. Um, well, that's quite ridiculous looking. Um, to be fair, not the intended purpose of that. Um, I'm just gonna fiddle with these sliders a little bit. And see if I can. All right, maybe maybe something like that. Um, all right, yeah. Um, so what I might do for bump maps sometimes, like, I might take this down to 0.01. I'm literally just like fiddling and seeing if I can make this less less weird looking. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it doesn't seem. I mean, if you set the bump like really really low, you can see that it's still it's still showing up, just not. Um, perhaps as aggressively. Um, do you happen to have a like a bump map that's just like black and white scratches? Okay. Yeah. No problem. Nice. Um, no, I got you. Um, but yeah. So I mean, it looks like that kind of shows up for the bump map. Um, might just aggressively mess with that exposure. Um, Yeah, that is, I mean, probably, I would guess that the, like, the reason that this is being weird, um, let me see if I can find an actual scratch texture online really quick. Alright, I just want, like, a crappy black and white. This feels not terrible. Sure. One can never have too many scratch textures saved on their flash drive. Um, all right, let me go through really quick. All right, cool. Found my scratch texture. All right, so yeah, I mean, if if I if I actually pull a, a real person scratch texture, um, it's not it's not too weird. I did I did mess with the exposure quite a lot, um, but it doesn't seem to be distorting the stone too badly. Um, what was it, the issue you were having was like the whole thing would turn white? Yeah, it would be like super random. Ooh, I see. Or like, it just didn't really stand out. Weird, okay. Yeah, so I mean it doesn't seem to be doing anything too bad to the bump texture. Um, let me try it on the, the other texture. Um, not the other texture, the, I'm gonna break the bump map and put it on roughness. Um, I would imagine that Roughness, like obviously this is very much the the wrong color for roughness. I'm gonna have to invert this. Um, so like, is this what happened to yours? Yeah. Okay. I mean, in this case, it's because I have, um, it's because of my file texture itself. So like, right now everywhere that's white is going to be rough. Um, it's gonna be like super super rough. Um, so I don't know what, what kind of texture map you're working at with. Um, even So if I check alpha as luminance, um, it does make it better in the sense that now I can see these super shiny scratches on the surface. Um, so like there was definitely something weird being caused by like the alpha, alpha is luminance not being checked. Um, but if you go down here under effects, um, I can invert this map. Um, and then you can see it, it changes anything that was white is now black um, and vice versa. So now most of this should be really, really shiny with a few like actual dull scratches, which still seems to be showing up fine. Um, 
So I'm not sure. I'm not entirely sure what that was. Um, if you have it on your computer, I can I can look at that more specifically later. But um, yeah, tech throwing tech throwing stones is fun. It's a pain, but it's fun. Um, does anyone have any questions about any of the the rendering stuff? Mm -hmm. Yes. No, I know what you're saying. A two, 2.5? Oh, like for like if you want to like clip them through for like walls or something like that, or like clip a bunch of like planes to like stack and make something. Um, my inclination is to say. A, I'm, I'm curious what exactly you have in mind um, for that. It, if it doesn't look super weird or like poorly done, I'd be inclined to be like, all right, like I'll kind of work with that. Um, but I think I need to see a more specific example of, of what you were talking about. But I mean, half of animation is kind of just like learning how to fudge things a little bit so they like look reasonable with, with a minimum amount of effort. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you have like if you have like ideas about stuff like that, I could I could talk with that with you later about that as well. Um, any other questions? All right. Um, well, if that's the case, um, I think I will.